so this video is going to be about how I decided to, qu to quit my antidepressant cold turkey it's so funny because I never thought of doing sorry my nose was itching I never thought of doing a video about this and now that I realized it it's such a like cool topic to do a video about like I don't even understand why I didn't do it while I was quitting my antidepressants I should have done it I mean I wasn't really able to do much as I was <laughs> quitting those antidepressants because I'm sure most of you know that you're not supposed to quit them cold turkey coffee break one second my coffee is getting cold yeah so most of you know that you're not supposed to quit your antidepressant cold turkey I did I did because no one can tell me what to f what to do <laughs> it's always been like that in my life it's gonna keep going like this um, but also I knew that you, you can't you couldn't die from it like people were like oh my god you're gonna die your brains gonna explode like you're gonna lose uh, you lose function of one of the one of your eye or whatever like it's so crazy and I've been on my antidepressant for maybe I think nine months um, and when I started those antidepressants it was gnarly like I don't even understand like it really felt great after I'm not gonna lie those antidepressants really did good for me because as a human being I'm very very stressed very anxious uh, the caffeine doesn't help I know um, like I said in my previous video like I come from a childhood with very bad traumas like very very bad like the kind of traumas that expect the worst and that's the worst you know and <clears throat> I've been living in those traumas for most of my life I'm 31 today and I decided to take antidepressant when I was 30 uh, I finally decided to like reach out to a doctor and you know like talk about uh, my traumas and um, I reached out to a therapist too and she helped me like getting on to those medication because at the time nothing was going right like I was crying myself to sleep every single night and my boyfriend which was like extremely helpful was always there for me really helped me as well but like there's only so much he could do and switching jobs like that you know and like living on my step parents and also I stopped talking to my mom which was a great thing that I did that I should have done for the longest time because as you can probably figure right now my mom was the main cause of my traumas so I quit talking to her and then my whole family went against me like my not against me but like you know my grandma was weird with me and my grandma was always like my best friend and she was like always the one that kind of saved me and that helped me through life and then all of a sudden she decided to be you know like mad at me or like angry that I was breaking the family by stopping to talk to my mom and for me that was really hard to like go through because then I felt really alone with no people around me and my friends were all like people that I would drink with or whatever so uh, it's not like I had many friends around me um because yeah like I said in my previous video I stopped drinking as well so basically I took those antidepressants to kind of like be able to go through life and like I said like we were buying a house and you know like I was in a job that I didn't really like either and in a house where I didn't have much freedom or like space you know for me for myself living in a basement too like I'm someone that loves sunlight and sunshine and and I love you know like air a lot of air I like my when my windows are open when I can see the sky when I even when it's raining I love to be able to see that it's raining outside and I love big windows and all that so living in a basement for me was really depressive and even if I was able to go outside like just being in my house I need to see outside so yeah basically um, I took antidepressant Effexor 75 milligrams <laughs> the first time I took my first pill I think I was excited for it I was like yeah drugs because you know I stopped taking drugs and all that so I was like yo let's get high again <laughs> joking um, I took the FXR at night and then I realized that this pills gives you a boost so you need to take it in the morning 
So my idiot self thought when I woke up the next morning, I was like, oh, I should take one now in the morning. So I get used to take it every morning. Cause like if I take it at night again, it's gonna be all fucked up. So like, even if I took one last night, I'm gonna take one this morning. Worst mistake ever. I took one in the morning, got so high, out of my mind. And I was like on the super low dose too, cause you start with 25, I think, and you go up to like 75. Worst mistake ever. I was driving my car. Like I thought I should not even be driving right now. I should not go to work. Like I'm really not feeling good. My jaw was clenched for some reason because obviously I drank coffee on top of it. So like the pillow was just like out of control, you know, like giving me all those freaking like symptoms. Like I'm not gonna lie to you, I felt like I was on crack. Literally on crack. I got to work, I was so focused. Like so focused it was insane like just thinking about it like makes me like m makes me feel to, uh, like sick to my stomach and i was working so hard all day like i was just like fixed you know like working 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 listening to my podcast just working so hard and i was avoiding talking to everyone because i'm like they're gonna like see how retardedly high i am right now <laughs> and it was like that for two weeks man two weeks like obviously I didn't feel like as like crazy as before as that morning like it, it did calm down a bit but like I was really like like I would come home and game and like I was like yo I've never been this focused in my life playing a game you know I play League of Legends and I was just like you know like non-stop it was so funny though the weirdest thing is that I thought I couldn't I, I was like I'm never gonna fall asleep like I have so much energy but no slept like a rock and so yeah, I kept on going with those uh, antidepressants for nine months. They were amazing. They did amazing to me. I was so chill, like nothing bothered me. Like the thing that would bother me on a daily basis did not bother me at all. Um, the only thing though, and that's where I'm gonna get a little private, is at first, and you probably all know, but I was able to have sexual intercourse. I would get excited and all that, but I would not be able to climax at all. Like it was just, and I knew it was probably the reason why, uh, it was probably because I've read reviews on the internet and people would be like, oh my God, it kills you a little bit, oh no, no, no. And like, it, I was so stuck in my head, but I, I was able to get like excited and I would think about it. And then eventually that got fixed. I was able to climax and all that. But then later on, a few months later, I felt like I plateaued so hard. Like my my feelings and emotions were so like plateaued. Like I, I was very chill, like I wouldn't get mad or I would or get sad, but like not too often, you know. Even my PMS, as a woman, my PMS were completely gone. I would not feel my PMS anymore. I would not feel sad. I would not feel like stress or anything. Like I would totally be normal like I would get my period and be like oh okay <laughs> I guess <laughs> bleeding <laughs> but that's it and sexuality for me vanished like I was still able to sleep with my boyfriend all the time like I would get excited na 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 but he had to like lead it he had to ask for it cause like it's not like I didn't have a libido. It's just it wasn't part of the things I would think about in my daily basis. Like I would never need it. I could have gone probably months without it, without even realizing it. So my boyfriend had to like kind of like push for it or ask for it. And like I was always attracted to him. Like he's such a beautiful beast. And I just realized on my own, I was like, oh my God, like sexuality is just not part of my brain anymore. It's not part of my needs anymore my desires and i thought it was bullshit i'm like i'm my my body my hormones my desires are frozen that's why things are going great it's frozen it's literally like non-existent anymore and i, I told myself i'm like man i i get it like it's kind of like hard to live with you know with like not depression i never had depression but anxiety and like this and that and insecurities but fuck it man we're human beings like yes i do have traumas but 
I told myself like I'm able to go through life without these crutches you know like I need to like deal with those traumas myself like I want my libido back like I'm 30 years old I'm at the peak of my life like I need you know I, I don't I don't want to freeze what's the best of human beings you know like I don't say I don't say sex is the best thing in your life the most important but man it is like with your when you have a beautiful boyfriend that you're attracted to you know when you have a beautiful body like you're working out eating well you're feeling at the peak of yourself but like your hormones and your sexuality is frozen to me it makes no sense to me sexuality is a beautiful thing it's a beautiful gift it and when you're in love with someone you should be wanting you should desire that person and I decided to quit my antidepressant and like everyone told me I tried before quitting it cold turkey but I, I got so scared because like the brain zap and all that but this time it was um, in between the, uh, the daycare and the first serving job and I decided to do it because I had like a week vacation or whatever and I was like you know this is the time plus new moon was in cancer really it was in Gemini though because <laughs> like I'm with the 13th sign and that so basically new moon was in Gemini and I'm a Gemini son and I was like today is the day plus I got my period that day new moon was on Gemini new moon is to start new thing new habits and I woke up and I was like this is the fucking day I'm getting off those meds those awful meds that are making me like a zombie and I talked to some people people were like you're an absolute crazy person blah 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 because I always make the mistake to go on Facebook and ask like what do you guys think about this and then they're like nah, nah, nah. and I'm like fuck your bitches like this part of me I hate you know <laughs> I always look for trouble <laughs> when there's none but anyways so and some of my friends told me the same thing don't do that don't do that but I would I'm so stubborn as a human being that when I want to do something I go at the end of it not always sometimes I don't go at the end of it but that day I was really set on it and I was like fuck you guys like I am getting off the medication um I'd say the first day was fine because like your body is kind of like oh it's probably happening soon you know the meds coming the meds coming the meds coming the second day and the third day was hella hard holy shit like I was alone at home thank god because like I was so unbalanced <laughs> like it just seemed like I was walking in a pool like in a very deep pool and the brain zaps like your, your brain goes shh, shh, shh. what the fuck is that man like why is my brain doing that it was doing that every 10 seconds like it was so weird like I had to meditate and tell myself like this is just mental this is just mental this is just like this is not real you know it's like I I, I was trying one of my um, one of the women I know that does bath sounds and all that um, she's very spiritual like she's like very into like the human being like healing yourself with like sounds and all that and she told me like go for it you know like I'm very proud of you you're gonna make it and she gave me like a good like speech um, uh, whatever like a good like pep talk yeah exactly pep talk she, g she gave me a very good pep talk and after that I was like feeling confident and you know, I was like I'm gonna go against my mind I'm I'm gonna go against what they say you know like fuck Western um, medicine I'm going for you know like Ayurvedic like Chinese medicine I'm gonna heal myself I'm gonna meditate I'm gonna like take over my mind you know like telling myself I f I'm feeling good I'm fine I'm gonna be able to go through this and I did I did that first week I'm not gonna lie to you it was tough even I started like a new job feeling like this still and it was so scary because I would be walking around and like brain zap brain zap again but I just had to go through them I was like acknowledging them they're there my face feel like I'm getting like a shock like an electrical shock and it's fine it's there but like you know keep going and then I kept going and kept going and eventually it just all disappeared and holy I'm gonna tell you guys my liver though was at its best <laughs> I was like babe I like you know like I just it's so crazy how you 
find your raw self again. I missed it so much. You know, I was crying. I was laughing. I was going crazy. I was losing my shit, obviously. But like I was making love and it was so amazing. And like everything was, the feeling was so beautiful. And like, I know I could probably be sued for what I'm going to tell you. But don't get on those meds. They're awful. They're, unless you have suicidal like depression chronic like suicidal thoughts or whatever and you're like at the end of it and you don't know what to do okay because like some you we all i think i think i'm missing some like chemical balance in my brain because you know like all the drugs i did all the alcohol i drank the trauma with my mom like all that like the beating up and all that like of course i have like chemical imbalance but I, I don't think they're like worse enough for me to like need to have medication but I know that in our world there's people that are like they need it because it's that only thing that helps them going through life and it, it, give, it gives them like a good crutch like I feel like a lot of, like some people need it but if you are like me or like less worse than me or whatever I 100% encourage people to not take those medication try your best to be able to fight the anxiety or the depression or whatever I've never had depression my I did like once in a while like having times where I was more low but there's so many things you can do like sports you know like I know it's kind of sucks to say because everyone's like yeah but I go to the gym and I still feel like this but find something else, dance, go to volleyball, do soccer, like arts, you know, like paint something or like take care of animals, you know, like adopt a cat that's, you know, been beaten before, like in a, or like in a refuge or whatever that needs your help. Like there's tons of things that, and also watch what you eat. It's so important. It's the most important thing in the world I find because whatever you feed yourself with, will reflect who you are if you eat a lot of sugars if you drink a lot of alcohol if you smoke a lot of weed and all that do a retrospection and then be like what could i eliminate from what i do in my daily basis to be able to feel better because people with depression all that will like smoke a lot of weed to like feel better drink a lot of alcohol after work to make themselves feel better after like a tough day at work but this is all this is all just a, a mask this is all just a cover you're like putting a band-aid on a deep wound thinking that it's gonna do like good but you need to stitch it you need to like heal it you need to you need to do something more than just taking a pill that's gonna like mask all your feelings or all your emotions like those pills like that's why like i i don't fuck with uh, medicine um western medicine in a way because like they teach you how to learn to live with your disease as you as i think that most of us again not saying all of us but most of us have what it needs within ourselves to heal ourselves human being the, the the human body is an incredible machine it's so smart like muscle memory and all that you can always do something that is gonna help you and if you do it like most people are like well i tried this for a week it didn't work nothing you do for a week will work they all say it 21 days to like start new habits and i think even more than that probably three months you need to do things on a daily basis you need to be consistent do it all the time if you go to the gym one month then stop three months then go back you'll never like see a result but if you go to the gym for a year you'll definitely see a result if you eat vegan food for a year you'll definitely see results if you meditate for three months you'll definitely see results you need to be doing this on a daily basis you need to believe that you're able to heal yourself you need to believe into yourself that you can heal yourself that's all i have to say about that and like i mean i've done it myself never again <laughs> to me it seems like a trap like when i when people tell me about antidepressant today i'm like oh it gives me goosebumps like i I wasn't that trapped before I got out of it and today I'm feeling so good feeling so good that I don't have to wake up take my pill you know like take a glass of water and be like okay now I can function or like 
having the fear of leaving without taking it because then you're going through those freaking withdrawal and then like the next day you're taking it or whatever you take it at night and then it destabilizes your whole body because like you didn't take it at the proper time and like the reason why also i didn't tap her off because there's they told me oh if you want to quit it you need to tap her it off it's because i would have to go see a freaking doctor and i had a private doctor because in the covid times you're unable to see a doctor like they're all taken like even the non rendezvous like without rendezvous takes two weeks rendezvous takes it makes no sense there's no doctors available so i decided to go to a private clinic but now he holds my case so every time i had to go see him it's a 275 dollars to go see him which i don't have because obviously I, ke- i keep quitting my jobs or losing my jobs so like i don't have 300 dollars to pay for my doctor and to tap her it off you do it like i think on eight months or whatever that's insane eight more months on that shit to be able to be off that shit so that means how many times am i gonna have to go see him in that eight months like three times three like a thousand dollars i'm gonna need to pay to get off that fucking bullshit no way that's why i decided to stop it cold turkey and guess what guys i'm still alive so don't let anyone tell you you're unable to do something unless you medically really need it unless you die you know what i mean thank you guys so much